In this video, I'm going to tell you about some of the reasons why some companies sell rule books and some give them away for free. Starting out today in the industry is a good deal different than the way it used to be. There are so many more games out there that are available to someone who wants to get into tabletop, you know, miniatures, tabletop wargaming. And the thing that I hear from people sometimes is like, why does this company give away their rules for free and this company charges money for them? What's, well, why, that doesn't seem fair. What's, what's the reason? Well, there's a couple of reasons, as it turns out. Generally, the reason the company gives away rules is because they're trying to get you to buy their models. Now, this is not nefarious nor sinister. It's just a, a business model. If we can convince you that our rules are cool and you can get them for free, you feel like you've already kind of like made an advancement there. So now you'll maybe spend that 30 bucks that you would have spent on the rule booklet on more miniatures, which is fine because generally, in a lot of cases, the miniatures companies make a better profit margin on miniatures than they sometimes do on print books. And you know, and there's differenti differentiation there. So we can make a PDF. Now again, they're not giving you a rule book for free just on the street corner. It's generally a PDF that you download. You can read it on your computer. You can read it on your iPad. You can do whatever you want and uh, kind of learn about it. It's kind of like shareware back in the day. If you're old enough to remember shareware on the PC, computer games, that where you would get like the first level and you could play the game, install it, play the game. And then at the end, you'd be like, hey, if you want to play more of this, you know, go here or you know, pay this thing or whatever the deal was. You know, if it depends on how old you are. Um, but the idea is that so much in these situations, it's not that we're going to give you a taste of the game and then, you know, you got to pay to get in. It's, we're going to give you the whole game. It's generally the way that these things are done. And then here's the model line that's available to work with it. Um, one that I was just looking at recently, uh, War Cradle is a company that makes a uh, Wild West Exodus and they have a new game called Mythos that I'm kind of interested in the miniatures quite a bit. And again, I was able to read the instructions, the rules, the game system online before I even, you know, got anything else. Now they sell the book as well if you do want a printed version because a lot of people like that. A lot of people will take a look at a game and say, yeah, this is cool. I've downloaded the PDF. I've read through it. That's cool. But now I want to buy it because I like it but I want to buy it because I like to have a book in my hand. Um, Starbreach is a company that has a free rule set, but then they also have a paid rule set, which is slightly fancier looking. It's got better artwork, the layout's better, all kinds of stuff like that. And I think there's also some extra rules and stuff like that. But then they also make a print version. Now, I don't think you can get the, hard, the hardcover version anymore. I think that was a Kickstarter thing, but you can get a soft cover print version if you're interested in that. But the entire game is also available, like I said, free. So some companies will do that where they, they give you a free version, but they also sell you a fancy version. Other companies that usually do that are also trying to sell you a line of miniatures. Whereas a company like uh, Starbreach here or S Slow Death Games that make, who make this, they don't really have a miniatures line for this game, but they're just trying to get you in the door. It's again, like I said, that shareware, like that first taste is free, except that it's the entire taste. You get to check out the entire rule set and you could play this. This is not a nerfed version of the game. It's something you can start using right out of the gate. Now, could a person get this free rule set and then not buy the models, but still play the game? Technically, yes, I'm sure that you could. If you wanted to, you can proxy whatever you want to proxy. That's what's cool to some degree about wargaming is that there are no rules as far as like how you can play the game. As long as you and your opponent are cool with this, this model is this and this model is that and this represents that, then play on, you know, and have a good time with it. Now, if you go to a convention or tournament or whatever, obviously you have to follow their rules and that's a totally different thing. But for just playing a game, company gives you free version of the rules, you don't have to buy their models. You should, I think, because more often than not, the games that do that type of thing, the models are very specific. You know what I mean? It's a... Uh, let's take a game like Zona Alpha. That's a game that you buy, the rule set, because they don't have any miniatures for it, right? And it's not that they just don't have any, they just don't want to go down that road. Also, the game is about soldiers. There's a lot of soldier miniatures out there if you want to use them. You may already have some and be set to go. You may want to go out and buy a couple, put them together, do some cool stuff with them. You've got lots of options that way. If the game was only about three-headed aliens, well, then you're probably going to have to produce a miniature line to go along with that. So, 
the, the subject matter of the actual game sometimes also steers whether it's a game that you buy and then you use the miniatures you want, or it's a game that you get for free and you use their miniatures. Those are kind of your options. And sometimes it's a mixture of the two. There are companies out there like Osprey who sells Stargrave, which is coming out soon, I think next month, uh, where you can use whatever models you want. And I plan to because I have a whole bunch of kitbashed models that I think are going to be a lot of uh, fun to use with these. But they also do sell, uh, you know, kind of like weird you, kind of uh, aliens and other kind of sci-fi plastic uh, models that you can buy. But again, it's just so that it helps them to sell more models. But if you don't, then you at least paid for the book. So they kind of got you on either end direction, you know, whichever way you want to go. If you end up buying the models and up buying the book, well, that's cool, but you don't have to. You don't have to go down that road. There are other companies out there, companies you may have heard of, that generally charge you for both the books and also for the miniatures. I mean, there's basically no companies out there that charge you, that don't charge you for the miniatures, pretty much. Um, so Games Workshop has been a company that has produced rule sets and miniatures um, for years and years and years. And for years and years and years, you always bought both. And uh, back when it was one of the few games out there, or there, at least there were fewer games out there, that just seemed normal and it was the way it was. And as newer companies have come out, uh, Cool and You're Not produced a couple different miniature games where you could just download the rules for free. They would sell you a book as well if you wanted to, but you could download the rules for free because they had this humongous model line. So there have been even successful companies that have gone down that road, companies that are getting up there. Um, but Games Workshop is generally almost always stuck to this, you buy the rules from us and you buy the miniatures from us. Till Age of Sigmar came out. Warhammer Fantasy was not doing well sales-wise. Uh, I think it was, what, around 9th edition Warhammer Fantasy. This is back in 2014-ish or something like that. And then they decided it was the end times and blah, blah, blah. And then the Age of Sigmar. So um, they completely ripped the Band-Aid off and rebooted the entire system. And there was some gnashing of teeth and rending of garments. But a lot of people actually were like, hey, this is pretty cool. I kind of dig it. And I would say that it has become very popular uh, in the last six, seven years. And it's been doing real well. And it's been selling real well, which is really the indicator there. Um, but they did something very different with Age of Sigmar. They made the rules free. Now, admittedly, the rules were like four pages long. So that wasn't a big, huge deal. But they also made the War Scrolls free. So all the stats for all the miniatures that you would ever buy, or have ever had really, were all available online to download for free. Not only that, they made a sweet app that you could just sit there and, uh, and this is gonna be TMI, but I guarantee you, I know I have bought or de decided to buy miniatures on the toilet because I'm sitting there on the app and I'm thrumming through it and I'm like, oh, that guy's okay. And that, that would synergize with my clan rats. Mm-hmm, yep, no, yep, yep, buy. I mean, and it happens and it's a smart move. When 8th edition 40K was nigh, uh, I was at a distributor conference. Um, distributors are the companies that go between the, 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 the company, the, you know, the, the, the manufacturers and the retail stores so that the retail stores don't have to reach out to every manufacturer separately. And anyway. Um, so I was at a conference of those and uh, you go there to listen to seminars from different manufacturers and things like that. And I was in the Games Workshop seminar with my friend I was there with. And uh, this is like they were getting ready to announce 8th edition and retailers were asking questions. And I asked a question and I said, with 40K, 8th edition, this new, are you going to do the same thing you did with Age of Sigmar where the rules are like in an app or you can download them in PDF for free and like, you know, the, and the, the data sheets and all that kind of stuff? And they said, no. And I thought that was weird. And after the presentation, I asked the guy, I walked up after the Q&A, and I said, uh, how come? And he said, it was a business decision. So, you know, I personally believe that they would sell more models, personally, if, uh, if they made the rules kind of free. And even Age of Sigma rules aren't free. They're still battle tomes. You can still buy battle tomes. The, again, the benefit to being able to look at the stuff ahead of time and figure out what you're going to buy or if you're even interested, I think is very important. It's a big reason why the, the stats for Kill Team were in the core book. You didn't have to buy another book to get the stats. Mm. Pariah Nexus being a, a, a slightly different story and going down a slightly different road that I don't agree with as well. Ciao. Um, but in general, you bought the book, you got everything you needed, boom, you're out the door. 
And we all know that that's not the case with Warhammer 40,000. You buy the core book, it's the rules, and that costs, I don't know, $65, $70 or something like that. And then you have to buy a codex, at least one, if not maybe multiples. And then, you know, who knows all kinds of other junk. And then you'd want to buy the models. And they can do that because they're at the top of the ladder to some degree. But I think it was a smart move on Age of Sigmar's part when they decided we're going to give you some of this stuff for free. We'll make add-on books that have got the extra battalions and things like that that are not included with the War Scrolls. So if you want to go down that road and have a slightly more powerful army, sure, you can kind of pay to play in that situation, and that's fine. But, you know, it depends. It becomes down like to a business decision. And the question becomes, are you a company big enough to decide we're going to sell you the miniatures and we're going to sell you the rules? Or would it be a good idea to maybe try to back off on a little bit of that? In the grand scheme of things, game businesses are businesses. They need to make money so that they can pay their employees so their employees can feed themselves and their family and keep a roof over their heads and all that jazz. So it's important to understand that money does need to get made. And so that makes sense. And different companies look at it in different ways, whether it is a situation of like, we'll, we'll put the rules out there so they can check that out for free. And then if they want to start buying some of the models and playing the game, great, we got them in the door. Or you can go the opposite route where it's like, we're going to sell you both the models and we're going to sell you the books and we're going to sell you another book and all that kind of stuff. And you as the, as the player, as the, the consumer, you have to vote with your wallet and figure out how you want to do things. Um, I have noticed in my last several years, I've been predominantly sticking to skirmish games because I like using smaller groups of models. And that has informed my decisions on the things that I buy. But I also really like, you know, indie kind of games, you know, uh, Stargrave, uh, Star Breach, Rangers of Shadow Deep, stuff like that. Things that you can get in PDFs like Planet 28. And, and others. And um, I just like being able to go through these different rule sets, figure out if I already have some models that'll work, and then I can sit down and play with those models and play a game with those. Or make, you know, I, I, I don't quite, but I've got some ideas on some kit bashing I can do that kind of scratches my creative itch. So you have to figure out how you want to play. If you are all about the competitive uh, thing, then you better find the competitive group that you want to play with. And you need to kind of play by those, uh, you know, uh, similar rules that everyone else is playing with. And so it, it's kind of dependent upon you. But the reason that some companies sell their rules and some give them away is because for the most part, they're all businesses and they have to figure out how they're going to make their money. And uh, you have to then as a consumer decide where your money's going to go.